Here are the most painful makeup prosthetics actors were forced to wear. When Jim Carrey played the Grinch, he said he had to sit through 8 hours of painful makeup sessions every day. He said putting on the makeup felt like he was being buried alive. The suit was so itchy and painful that after the first day of filming, he kicked a hole through the wall and was going to quit the movie. So Jim Carrey hired a CIA expert who trained him on how to deal with torture. Buddy Epson played the original Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz, however, you never actually see him in the movie. This is because the original Tin Man outfit and makeup contained real aluminum which is extremely toxic. This caused Buddy to be rushed to the hospital where he almost died. Top 5 countries with the longest school days. Australia 6.5 hours. France 8 hours. South Korea 8 hours. Kenya 8 hours. China 9.5 hours. Here's why you should stop rubbing your eyes. That was no joke, you seriously need to stop rubbing your eyes as much and here's why. Trust me, you might want to favorite this video because you might need this as a reminder in the future. Let's be honest, we're all guilty of this at some point. But I bet you didn't know that continually rubbing your eyes can actually cause really bad damage to your cornea. In fact, it can thin out your cornea, causing it to bulge. I mean, let's go back to the MRI footage. This is someone rubbing their eye. Visibly being able to see the pressure it puts on your eye. And the way that the eye can actually change shape. Increasing the pressure on your eye by 20 times. And it gets worse if you rub your eyes with your knuckles or the back of your hand. So although the occasional rub probably won't do you any harm, consistently doing it and consistently doing it hard could lead to potential vision loss. So saying this to literally anyone you know because for their eyes sake, they need to see this. Elon! This woman who recently competed in the Olympics in Paris was just murdered. This is 27-year-old Rebecca Chaptike and she was a marathon runner in Uganda. Rebecca competed in the women's marathon in the Olympics and she finished in 44th place. Not long after returning from Paris, on August 31st, she was set on fire by her boyfriend. They identified this man as Dixon Edema and apparently they were arguing over a piece of land. The attack happened outside of Rebecca house and it was said that her daughter tried to help her and save her but this man had kicked her and also tried to beat her as well. It was said that Rebecca was found by neighbors who heard the arguing and they were the ones who put out the fire. These burns were so severe it covered 80% of her body and that's why she did not survive but her boyfriend was also burned but it only covered about 30% of his body and he is now in stable condition. This is so sad and a violence towards women in Uganda is very common there's actually been a few athletes who have been murdered by their partners in the last few years. Maps that will change the way you see the world. This is a unique visual that shows what the Roman Empire citizens believed was the entire world. This is what Chile looks like stretched across all of Europe. This is what all the uninhabited land in the United States looks like. This map shows the largest employer in each U.S. state. These are the average train speeds across Europe. This map shows the distribution of ticks that are infected with Lyme disease across the United States. This map shows in the United States how many people commit violent crimes per 100,000 residents. This is a topographic map of Europe. This map shows the percentage of population in each Europe country that has never used the internet before. This map is comparing the populations of cities in Greece and Turkey with each little square representing about 250,000 people. This map shows the most popular streaming services across all the countries in Europe. Can you guess where this puzzle piece is from? Are you able to guess what country this is just by the shape? If you haven't heard about this new scam, you need to watch this video right now. Police across the world are warning people of this literally as we speak, and you would never even realize you've been scammed until this. So there is a new scam which only takes one person to do it in one simple move. And what it does is allow hackers to get into your phone, get access to all your personal information, cards, any single thing you own. So how this works is you'll get a package outside your door, like you would, from a brand. It could be Amazon, it could be Pretty Little Thing, anything that you're buying. It'll probably be from a company that you buy stuff from regularly. So you just think, oh, I'm a loyal customer. They're giving me a free gift. You open it up. There could be something inside. It might be a t-shirt, might be a hoodie, might be some shoes, whatever. Then there'll be a QR code in there that says, thanks for your loyalty. Please scan here. Obviously, you're going to scan it. Why wouldn't you? Well, if you scan this QR code, that's where this happens. They will then be able to get into your phone from scanning that link. You literally would not be able to tell this has happened to you until you see the money going out of your account or something like that. So yeah, if you don't order a parcel, just be wary if there's a QR code in there that it's telling you to scam. Do your research, please. 
please because it could save you a lot of money now of course please share this video around with anybody you know friends and family because i know some of the older generation would scan it in an instant hit that follow button and i'll keep you updated China has just had to urgently evacuate over 400,000 people after they were hit by one of the most powerful super typhoons in over a decade. And for perspective, a super typhoon is equivalent to that of a Category 5 hurricane. All schools in the area that it made landfall were shut, trains, boats and flights were suspended, and all tourist attractions have been closed down. The winds near its center reached a staggering 145 miles per hour. And this typhoon has doubled in strength after it killed more than 16 people in the Philippines last week. It's now predicted to move along and hit Vietnam this weekend. Uncommon human traits. Being able to move one eyebrow, 25% of people. Growing a full beard, one in five men. Having dimples, one in five people. Going bald, one in eight men. Having an outy belly button, one in 10 people. Being left-handed, one in 10 people. Having curly hair, one in 10 people. Having blue eyes, one in 10 people. Having green eyes, one in 50 people. Did you know these facts? The Boeing factory is so large they had to install a one-of-a-kind air circulation system to stop clouds from forming inside of the building. This is the world's smallest drawbridge in Bermuda. The US Navy is known to have used Xbox controllers to control the periscopes on submarines. James Cameron was homeless when he wrote The Terminator. He sold the rights for one dollar on the condition that he was the one to direct the movie. A race was held in 1888 between a pigeon and a bee for three miles where the bee won by 25 seconds. Camels have three eyelids that helps protect their eyes from the blowing sand. Cherries are dried with helicopters. It would take you 18 months to walk the Great Wall of China. The USA speaks more than 350 different languages. Scientists are out there making arguments that we may have more than five senses, one of them being magnetoreception, which is the ability to sense magnetic fields, and the other is chronoception, which is the ability to sense time passing. You won't believe what this man saw during the 2024 solar eclipse. Reddit user Blakester731 said that him and a couple of friends went to watch the solar eclipse at a fishing spot out in the backwater in Tennessee. It was a secluded area that also hosts a small Trail of Tears memorial. They passed the stone monument on their way to go fishing, which acknowledged the removal of the Cherokee from their native land and the tragedies that occurred there. He said that him and his friends gave it their private respects and moved along to the fishing spot. Time passed like any other day out fishing and they were having a good time. Towards the afternoon, the dark shape of the moon started to move closer to the sun. The woods all of a sudden became very quiet. The sounds of birds, flies, and cicadas all seemingly disappeared. Then the eclipse started and the world got darker around them. Colors and weird shadows split across the ground. Reddit user Blakester731 said that he was switching from his light resistant glasses to the landscape around him. He looked towards the trees, and then finally, the moon was full and only the sun's halo showed behind it. He took the glasses off to see it more clearly, and then he says, they were there. He said that they were like reflections and shadows standing around them. There were tall, dark human shapes surrounding them. There were hundreds of them in the woods, behind the trees, and on the shoreline. He screamed and fell out of his chair. His friends then took their glasses off and shot out of their chairs too. They all grouped together and started moving towards their truck. But just as the moon moved off the sun, the shadow figures vanished. The whole thing had lasted less than three minutes, but they got out of there as fast as they could. Gruesome facts you didn't know, part 219. This is the last video taken of Steven Weber, who proposed to his girlfriend underwater. While on a trip in Tanzania, the couple were staying in a submerged room. Steven swam underwater to the outside of the room with a note and a ring. The front of the note read, I can't hold my breath long enough to tell you everything I love about you but everything I love about you, I love more every day. When he turned the note over, it read, will you please be my wife, marry me? He then produced a ring from his pocket before swimming out of frame. Tragically, he never made it to the surface and drowned. The Mark Jackson basketball card from 1990 has two unique guests featured in the background. The Menendez brothers can be seen sitting courtside after murdering their parents and prior to their arrest. 
When the SS Daniel J. Morrell began to sink on Lake Huron in 1966, the crew believed they were just moments from being rescued when they spotted lights that they believed was from another boat. To their horror, they discovered that the lights were actually from the severed stern of their own ship. It was barreling towards them under the power of the ship's engine. Alright, so these are the insects that's usually on your strawberries. Let's see what's up. So, so far we got some mites. And it's pretty normal if you want fresh organic vegetables and fruits, they're going to have bugs on them. Let's see how much are when you rinse them or wash them off. Ooh, looks like just rinsing them for a few seconds got rid of a lot of the insects. Now, I will say even though you wash them off on the outside, they're still the inside, which I'm sure contains plenty of insects because they barrel themselves in. So even when you wash your fruit and veggies, just know there might be insects inside the fruits and veggies as well which is a good source of protein, I guess, right? We are now learning that Colt Gray, the 14-year-old shooter, was relentlessly bullied at school for being gay. And the reason we even know this information is crazier. So in May last year, the FBI received a tip that Colt made a threat on Discord to shoot up a middle school. So naturally, police turned up at his house and questioned Colin, his father. He told police that Colt was being picked on every day and his classmates would call him gay. He revealed that the bullying got so bad that Colt wanted to move out of the school district. Now, when police told him what his son said on Discord, he reassured officers saying that he would be mad as hell if he found out that it was true and that all guns would go away. Now, despite this, that Christmas, Colin gave Colt an AR-15, which he would then use nine months later to do the very thing that he threatened over a year ago. And that is why the father is now facing 180 years behind bars. If you die in this VR game, you die in real life. Yes, this video is not fake. This is genuinely something that was just invented and you won't believe who by. And it's not as crazy a person as you might think, which kind of makes it even more terrifying. It is almost unbelievable the world's first VR headset that literally kills you if you die in the game has just been created. And just quickly, TikTok are now showing you your lookalike on the app. Just tap share copy more and if you've got one, it will come up. The man who invented it, Palmer Lucky, is a leader in VR, a government contractor and the creator of Meta's Oculus headset. So this is the real deal. The headset is hooked up to three explosive charge modules that sit above the screen. The charges are aimed directly at the user's forebrain and should they go off would obliterate the head of the user. He said he created it because only the threat of serious consequences can make the game feel real to you and every other person in the game. He even says that he wants to work on an anti-tampering model that cannot be removed or destroyed. So if you decide to put it on, there is no going back. Thankfully, this headset is not commercially available yet. Would you play this with any of your friends? Did you know these facts? Jesse Pinkman and Walter Jr. were never in an episode of Breaking Bad together. Amelia Earhart had a co-pilot when she went missing. Bill Withers wrote the song Ain't No Sunshine while he worked for a factory that built airplane toilet seats. A bear was the first living being to survive a supersonic ejection. Dr. Phil lost his psychology license in 2006 and all guests on his show have to sign a contract that says that they are getting advice from an individual and not a psychologist. Gaming tournaments are now adding clauses to allow judges to penalize players for dirty clothing or terrible odor as much as giving them a full loss. Berlin has still not recovered from its pre-World War II population count. A school principal made a student that was in trouble sit in the basement and read the U.S. Constitution. That student was Thurgood Marshall. He memorized the entire Constitution and became the first ever black Supreme Court justice. Here are some Disney Channel stars that went to jail, but each time the crime gets worse. Starting off, Mitchell Musso, who played Oliver Oaken in Hannah Montana, was pulled over in 2011 for driving under the influence. He was only 20 at the time and was arrested and released on bail. Because of this, his character was written out of Pair of Kings and his show Pranks stars was cancelled. Next up, Adam Hicks, who played Luther on Zeke and Luther and had a starring role in Lemonade Mouth, was arrested a couple times, but most recently for an armed robbery with his girlfriend. His sentencing was delayed multiple times due to mental health evaluations and was 
eventually given a five-year sentence. But he's now currently on parole and making music on TikTok. Moving on, Lindsay Lohan was Disney's golden child in the early 2000s, starring in iconic movies such as The Parent Trap, Freaky Friday, and Mean Girls, before getting into trouble with the law. She's been arrested for driving under the influence, drug possession, violating her probation, a theft charge, and has even had a bench warrant out for her arrest. And finally, Phil Lewis, who played Mr. Mosby on The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, was arrested and charged for vehicle manslaughter after killing a 21-year-old girl while drunk driving. When they tested his blood alcohol, it was three times the legal limit. He was originally given a five-year sentence, two years of probation, and 350 hours of community service, but ended up only serving one year due to his work with prison-based theater groups that performed in jails, churches, and schools to highlight the consequences of drug abuse. But like pandas, right, they'll usually have twins, but since they don't have the facilities to take care of more than one, let's just say Zach might be fine, but Cody getting canceled. Mary Kay might be okay, but Ashley ain't. And that's assuming Big Mama don't roll in her sleep and flatline her first choice. So what Zoos will do is they'll have twins running shifts with a mom. That way both cups have a chance at life all time to desaturate a deadbeat is convinced she only had one. Here are some other horrible mothers of nature. The Harp Seal, because she's actually a good mother. For like two weeks then she leaves the kid on ice even though it won't be able to swim or really do anything for itself for the next six weeks hosting your child to chase more seal peel is negligent doing it in god's ice box is outrageous and pulling that in polar bear country is just diabolical the scorpion because she literally carries her entire family on her back to protect them from predators pretty f***ing ironic because if there is enough food around she'll take some of the brood off her back and have herself a kid's meal this guy and i think you know why because marsupials like quokkas wallabies and kangaroos will evict their child out the pouch as a last resort against predators logically yeah i guess that makes sense morally it puts you in the class of Casey Anthony, this welfare fraud with wings. Not only do they con other birds into raising children they have no parts in, it is scientifically documented that cuckoos will use mob violence to force them to do it. So to be fair, the first thing the cuckoo chick does is yeet every foster sibling out the nest. And when you're born that much of a cockwife, there isn't much hope for your future, the more you know. During World War II, the British decided they wanted to take back Ramri Island from the Japanese. So on January 21st, 1945, British and Indian infantry stormed the beaches of Ramri to try to take it back. As soon as they land, they have all this naval artillery support just bombing the crap out of this airbase. But the Japanese do not want to surrender, and instead they give up the airbase that they were on, so the British take that back, and the remaining thousand Japanese soldiers started retreating to the opposite end of the island. But the only issue with this particular retreat was they would have to go through 10 miles of mangrove swamp. So that night, as the British are just kind of hanging out in their boats, staring at the swamp, they start hearing screams coming from inside of the swamp. And it's Japanese soldiers putting their gunfire and then silence. And the British are watching this like, do we have troops in there? What's going on in there? What was going on in there is defined by the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest massacre of humans caused by animals. And not just any animal, saltwater crocodiles. Saltwater crocodiles are notorious night hunters. So what probably happened is the Japanese got inside of this mangrove. The crocodiles were immediately aware of their presence, but they waited until nighttime before they started having a feeding frenzy. And at the end of their retreat, when the Japanese did get to the other side of the swamp, only 500 of the 1,000 made it out the other side. And so to this day, people stay far away from Ramri Island because there are so many of these man-eating saltwater crocodiles that have no issue ripping you to shreds. Is it actually dangerous to tickle a stingray? Tickling a stingray, as depicted in a viral video where a man appears to make a stingray laugh, might seem like a harmless and amusing interaction. However, experts caution against such actions for several reasons. And just quickly, check if you've got any free TikTok tokens to claim. Tap share, copy, then more, and you'll see if you have any. Primarily concerning the safety and well-being of the animal. Stingrays, like many aquatic creatures, are not accustomed to being handled by humans, especially in ways that are unnatural to them, such as tickling. These animals are adapted to life in water, where they have evolved specific behaviors and responses to their environment. Interactions like tickling can be stressful and potentially harmful to stingrays. They may not have the same sensory responses as mammals, and what appears as laughter or enjoyment is likely a misinterpretation of their natural reaction to an unusual stimulus. Furthermore, stingrays have defense mechanisms, including the well-known sting in their tail which they use when they feel threatened or stressed. Attempting to tickle or otherwise interact closely with a stingray can provoke this defensive response, posing a 
risk of injury to the person involved. From an ethical standpoint, respecting wildlife and maintaining a safe distance is crucial for the conservation and well-being of these animals. Top three creepy last words people said right before dying. A nurse who wants to remain anonymous said that she had a sweet patient named Ella who started to lose herself to dementia. She started talking to herself. Most of the time, it was playful. She would laugh to herself. One day, the nurse walked into her room and she was in a complete panic. She had her blanket pulled up to her chin and she was completely pale. The nurse went to her bedside to ask her what was wrong, and she said, There is a woman in black looking in my window, and I am just petrified of her smile. The nurse said that it shook her heart. Reddit user Simple Simon 6262 said that when he was a student, he got called in on a stroke patient. She had coded, and they were doing CPR. They worked for 45 minutes but she died. They cleaned her up and called on her family to say goodbye. By the time her family left, she had been both brain dead and without a pulse for over 45 minutes. He said that blood had filled her brain and she was completely gray and had started to smell. Suddenly, she sat up and called for her family. The nurses rushed to get equipment and monitors back on her. She stabilized, said goodbye to her family, and promptly died a second time. Reddit user AJH1717 said that he works in a cardiovascular surgical ICU. He said that they had a stretch of nights where each corner room of their unit reported seeing a black cat cat walking around. Not a friendly cat either, apparently. The thing was hissing at them. The accounts were so similar to each other that they probably spent half an hour looking for the cat. Then they had security look as well. No cat was ever seen or found. Two of those four patients coded the next day. Have scientists just proven that we actually live in a simulation? I cannot believe what I'm about to tell you. Trust me, you're gonna wanna favorite this video because this could actually change the world. Essentially, the new laws of physics support the concept that we are living in a computer simulation. Now please, stay with me. This is all being researched by a man named Melvin Vopson, a name which after this video, you're probably gonna wanna bring up in your next therapy appointment. Claiming that we are all characters in an advanced virtual world. He claims that the physical behavior of information in our universe resembles the process of a computer deleting and compressing code. Now, do you want to know what that means? So do fucking I. However, it's his next quote specifically that makes me go, What? A clue that perhaps the machines hope we don't notice. You're right, Melvin, mate. These are some bold claims that we are absolutely living in a computer simulation. Bold enough claims to give Matthew nightmares. There is so much more on this, including the fact that he believes symmetry in our world is the clue to everything, saying that all biological life presents some form of symmetry. As well, solids and crystals also have symmetry, because apparently symmetry is the best way of optimizing and rendering a digitally constructed world. And that's why we have symmetries everywhere, rather than asymmetries. I'm way too deep down this rabbit hole. What do you think, computer simulation or real life? <laughs>
1559, King Henry II of France was participating in a jousting tournament. During a match, he was severely wounded in the eye and brain by a splintered <laughs> lance. He died of his injuries 10 days later, with his death leading to the decline of jousting as a sport in France. Actress and Playboy centerfold Yvette Vickers was last seen in 2010 after withdrawing from her family and friends. When neighbor Susan Savage noticed cobwebs on the mailbox, she went inside to investigate. Upstairs, she discovered her mummified body. Lieutenant Colonel William Henry Rankin is one of only two known persons to survive falling from the top of a cumulonimbus thunderstorm cloud. He was forced to eject from his jet when his engine failed. It took him 40 minutes to finally reach the ground. During his descent, he suffered from frostbite and severe decompression caused his mouth, eyes, ears, and nose to bleed. What you're about to see is intense. What you just saw is the United States Coast Guard raiding a high-speed submarine in the eastern Pacific Ocean moving more than 17,000 pounds of cocaine. Okay. On June 18th, 2019, a Coast Guard surveillance aircraft tracked and intercepted Ball up in the air, picked off the drug-filled narco sub hundreds of miles off the Colombian Ecuadorian coastline. The video shows a member of the Coast Guard riding on top of the speeding submarine. He then starts pounding on the hatch and demanding it to come to a stop. Three other Coast Guard members then jump ship and board the 40 foot long submarine. The video then continues and you see the presumed trafficker emerging from the submarine hatch with his hands up surrender. And in total, five alleged smugglers were seized on board the vessel and were handed over for prosecution by the United States Drug Enforcement Administration. Are these your friends, the police? Now, just watch the full encounter unfold. It's honestly something straight out of a video game. It's gonna be hard to get on. I'll do the Barco. Job is to make sure that these criminals survive long enough to have that justice served.